Good morning. How are you doing? Okay, still not awake, so I'll try to not to bore you to death. So, hi. Uh, I'm Christian Heimers. I'm from Hamburg, Germany. Um, some of you may know me. I'm a Python core contributor. I work on mostly security stuff for Python core, so SSL hashlet model. And those of you who still use Python 2, I also helped you to do bytes and the deep string prefix in Python 2 back then. So some of the stuff I did in the past. So I'm from Hamburg, and I'm really glad I could make it here. Usually Hamburg looks like that, except if you have the G20 summit and looks like that. So these are burning things in the streets and riots, and they burned like lots of cars and shops, and eh, it was fun. Not. So in my professional life, I also do security things. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat now for over two years. I work on the software stack I'm now going to present to you. Um, so FreeIPA, Doctag, who is a part of FreeIPA, and Custodial Secrets Management, which is also a part of FreeIPA. So FreeIPA, uh, in case you wondered, it's not that. It's not Indian pale ale, so it won't give you free beer in the morning. Sorry, at that one. So it's uh, identity policy and auditing. It's an open source stack built of lots of components. I'll show you in a minute. So first, the agenda. What's the plan for today or the morning? So first, I will run you to a small scenario where you could benefit from identity management. Then I will, oh, sorry. Uh, We'll explain what is identity management. We go through uh, the software stack of FreeIPA, the components, how to uh, integrate FreeIPA, and then I'm doing a bit of demoing. So installation, I'm not going to show the actual installation because it's going to take like 10 minutes. We don't have that much time, uh, but I'm going to show you how to um, actually integrate that into like a HTTP application and summary at the end. So. The scenario, very simple case. You want to have a bulletin board for your company where you just share notes. What do you need? So, first of all, users need to log in. Oh, the fonts aren't showing up correctly. Oh, that's new. Oh, that one works. So, uh, there should be login password. For some reason, the fonts don't show up. Uh, you need a user database because you also want to show a real name, email address, maybe a phone number where you can reach a coworker. You need to handle per permissions. You don't want to have like the intro looking at uh, notes from like the CTO. Uh, of course, these days you want to secure all your networks with proper TLS. So you need certificates for that, a private key, and some infrastructure. Uh, you maybe you need to renew your certs every once in a while. And finally, for the people who are going to deploy the application, you need to SSH into a machine, and maybe have pseudo rules so they can get root privileges. That's going to be a bit complicated if you have like not like one machine and 10 users, but like 50 services like that, and uh, maybe 50 users or 500 or 10,000 10, users. So don't worry, be happy. We want to make first human resources happy. So we want, don't want them to add new users like to 50 databases, and also that the metadata in one place. So if somebody get married, change the name, they don't want to add like 50 user databases all over the place, just one. We want to make the admins happy. So we want to have them centralize all the access control, uh, don't mess with certificates manually because OpenSSL command line interface is just painful to use. 2FA for some services would be nice. Developers. Um, you as a developer probably don't want to learn about all of Kerberos or how SAML works or how to interface with LDAP. So we want to use LDAP and Kerberos, but don't actually code that. Have that automated and wrapped away for you very easily. And finally, the plain users or the coworkers just want to have one password, one login for all stuff you have on the company. If that sounds a bit familiar to you, there was actually a talk by a coworker of mine uh, two years ago at EuroPython who explained that uh, using a Django app, uh, if you want to know more about actually integrating uh, the whole stack, look, watch that talk. I'm more explaining like the DevOps part of FreeIPA and a bit more the techie part. 
what's identity management? So who of you heard the term identity management before or actually uses one? I see, well, like one third, 50%, meh. Okay, just first start, obviously, Wikipedia definition. Identity management describes the management of individual principles, their authentication, authorization, and privileges within or across system and enterprise boundaries with the goal of increasing, increasing security and productivity while decreasing costs, downtime, or repetitive tasks. So, a couple of terms I make bold. Some of you may know the terms, but not all of them, so get on the same page. What are they? So, principle. It's just a fancy name to describe some kind of entity we want to identify. So it's not only users, because we also want to identify machines and services. Uh, authentication, just to make it clear, um, authentication is about proving who you are. So like using a password and a, and a login name, or using a smart card, or some other fancy ways. Authorization is uh, actually giving you access to something. So, uh, for example, uh, one across to another country, you show your passport, so you're authenticating yourself, you're proving your name, and giving if you're authorized to enter or not, the border guard will let you in or not. And this is often coupled with privileges to make it a bit easier, so you're in a certain group, a certain group is allowed to do something, uh, or you can delegate uh, permissions to somebody temporarily, yeah. Now, free IPA. A bit of teaser what the web page of FreeIPA tells you about FreeIPA. Um, so, identity, um, uh, manage links users and client hosts on your realm from one central location with CLI, web UI, or RPC, and have a single sign on for all your applications. So, that's the identity part. Uh, policy, uh, something if you're an admin, uh, also a very important thing. Once you're authenticated, you want to also grant users certain kinds of access. And you also want to centrally manage like for your web servers, who's allowed to log in, who's allowed to gain root privileges. So you can do uh, like uh, as a Linux rules, AutoFS rules, if you have NFS, sudo rules, whatever. And finally, uh, trust. So for IPA can also do trust, um, cross realm trust with other domains, for example, Active Directory. Now if you wonder where the A, where the audit, we haven't got to that yet. So we're, we're still uh, haven't added actual auditing to the core of free IPA. Uh, that's something that's currently developed as external projects, for example, console logging, where you can you audit what an admin does on a machine that's not yet integrated. Actually, should you actually use free IPA? Well, it depends a bit. If you want to use free IPA just as your user database for a single server so that's public on the internet, probably not. Because these days you have Let's Encrypt, you get a public trusted certificate, uh, you have like social login, uh, GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, Google, they all have like OpenID Connect uh, providers. If you're in university, you have often a SAML or Shibboleth based solution. Um, just use that if you have just one public service. But if you have lots of internal services where you don't want to disclose your services to the public, for example, for Let's Encrypt, you have to actually uh, create a certificate with all the host names in them. So everybody could see your names because they also publish their uh, certificates in a log. Although they're now adding wildcard certs, but still wildcard certs are very dangerous. One of your hosts gets compromised, then you can throw away while called third, you have to re-roll your whole application, your whole basically network, because your whole network's got compromised. If just one service leaked the private key of your certificates. So for a non-trivial case, if you have to deal much more than simple web pages or more than one simple case, FreeAPA is actually a good solution. So if you have more than the trivial amount of users or admins, um, if you want to reuse all your information, not only for just a web service and for SH login, but even for like email or you have a Java client, I'll come to that later. Uh, if you want to manage your own internal CA uh, for all your services, maybe even for VPN logins, for smart kind of authentication, um, yeah. 
Also, um, I still remember from my, my first draw it was rather tiresome to get logged into all machines because the admin had to copy my uh, public SSH key to all the machines and add me to pseudo rules. So if you want to automate that in a central way, free API is also very useful. And finally, if you really want to scale up, you like start up with things. Oh, we might go from a couple of users to a lot of users. Yeah. That's free API might be a good solution for you. So what is it actually? Eh, it's a it's a lot of components. So these are five of the most important components. You have um, KDC, um, the Kerberos Key Distribution Center. You have an all-up server. You have a public key infrastructure server. You have a DNS server built in, and you have a set of tools, both web-based and common line-based, to manage the whole solution and much more. So, MIT Kerberos. Uh, the, the single sign-on and the authentication between machines, for most parts, you can do more. Uh, 3 at 90 s is an all-up server, uh, originally developed by Netscape and now maintained by Red Hat. DocTag Doc Public Key Infrastructure is a Java Tomcat-based solution, uh, which is built for rather large entities, now also wrapped internally in FreeIPA to give you a CA infrastructure. We have bind DNS, bound to ALDAP. Uh, we have SSSD, a demo probably most of you don't know, comes with that also in a minute. We have a patchy HTTP with a couple of modules I'm going to explain later. And finally, all the tooling around, the glue code between all the stuff, including the installer, management, it's all written in Python. So, who knows who, how Kerberos works? Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Then. So, uh, Kerberos is a uh, both like three-headed town and uh, also a protocol both of you assign with enterprise and think it's already dead for years. No, it's not. If you use Active Directory from Windows, it's basically Kerberos and LDAP. And in big enterprises, you also use <laughs> Kerberos. It's not that complicated for end users. So, I give you a small example how actually Kerberos mostly works it's good enough to understand how it works. So imagine a public transport system. So public transport system, like for example, we have Rimini. Uh, you wanna ride a bus in Rimini. So you have, in, in Kerberos it's called Real, and it's mostly written, always written in uppercase. So um, I as a user wanna ride a bus in Rimini, so I need an account. So that's mostly written like that, so it's me, C. Hymus, at Rimini IT. That's my user principle. Um, we also have services and hosts. So like a place like bus stop would be like here, Palace Kongazi, Rimini IT, at Realm Rimini IT. And finally, the service, written like that. So you have like a service identifier shuttle bus uh, starting at Palace Kongazi, Rimini IT. So in the morning, I like to ride the bus. So the first thing I have to do, I have to prove my identity to something called an authentication server. This authentication server, once I prove my identity, I'm getting a ticket back. It's called a ticket granting ticket, like a daily pass. So when I want to ride the bus, I show this ticket granting ticket to a ticket granting service. Oh no, sorry. First of all, I have to store my ticket like in my wallet. It's called credential cache, not that. So um, I show my ticket, my ticket run ticket to a ticket granting server, and that one gives me back a ticket that's only valid for this shuttle bus. And finally, I show this ticket to the bus driver, and he has internally like a verification thingy called a key tab, and he can verify my ticket. The tickets are usually valid for a couple of hours, half a day, and that's how single sign-on works. So you have to type your password only one time, maybe with 2FA, maybe with smart card authentication, and then you have something you can use all over the place to request new tickets. And we also have all information stored in the LAP server, so that's a central database. Uh, LAP is an hierarchical database, like a, a tree. Um, 
good thing is it's all standardized, so both the protocol is standardized, so you don't need like in the SQL world, the Postgres or MySQL driver, you just use an LDAP driver, can talk to any LDAP server. Also the database schema is uh, standardized for everything you basically need, so no matter what, if you talk to Windows or uh, Linux, if they implement the correct schema part, like POSIX user, it works. All, works. Uh, LDAP is heavily optimized for reading, so you don't write that often to LDAP, and they also can heavily optimize all reading operations and replication, so you can have like a distributed network of LDAP servers. We have fine-grained access control. You can actually um, combine with a delegation, uh, make sure that every user only sees what he's allowed to see. So delegation means, typically in a web application, you have uh, a user that logs into a web application, then you have from the web application to a database server and a database user for that web application. We don't do that. The user that logs into the web application or the command line interface gets delegated through the LDAP database. The LDAP database only sees the actual user. There's no kind of special service user for the database connection. And so we can actually fine grain which part of the data a user can see, modify, query, yeah. So any kind of SQL um, injection wouldn't work for LDAP. So you can even let basically any user directly query access the LDAP server, uh, they can't do any harm. And even the front end doesn't uh, do extra permission checks. It's all handled by the database. And finally, master-master uh, master replication with a replication topology. That's so. That's how uh, LDAP Server looks from a software stack called Apache Directory Studio. On the left, you see a tree. On the right, you see one of the leaf nodes with my user login. And of course, if you just have one free IPA server, it wouldn't be very redundant. So you probably want to have like two, three, five, or ten users, uh, ten servers or more. So that's handled by something called replication. And uh, here's two examples how you would do like a replication between uh, four data centers with three or four servers. You create a couple of replication agreements, and they will distribute the data and the load over time. That scales up very nicely. Here's another example we did for a performance test with 60 uh, servers. Uh, so each of these small green thingies is the server. We also have a DNS server. You might wonder why DNS server? Yeah, host names are also identities. So we have host names in the uh, DNS server and also the reverse zone, so you don't have to create your own reverse zone mappings. Uh, we use uh, DNS for service discovery and failover, so um, we are able to get all like LDAP servers from DNS, even location-based, and if some of the servers fall out, then we automatically try another one. We don't have to configure that. Um, with the location support, we make sure that you try to stay in your own data center and only go to another one if all the servers locally fail. We store your SSH uh, fingerprints in the DNS server, and we also do DNSSEC because, well, we can do that. So here's an example of what we can get from LDAP. So you see like Kerberos information, a service record for LDAP, and SSH. Uh, next thing is DocTag, that our uh, CA servers. Uh, can do like, it's a certification authority. You can have sub CAs. You can have, uh, you can do all the life cycle of a certificate for a server. Uh, you can have different profiles. If you need a special profile for your VPN server or your web server or whatever other server you have, so you'll an OCSP to revoke and check certificates. Um, the SCAP protocol used by some, I think, Cisco machines, and also a way to uh, do escrow if you want to encrypt data and store it in there. It's also HSM uh, smart card support, but that's not supported with FreeIPA, just with standalone DocTag. And finally, SSSD, it's a daemon running on all your machines, even on the client machines when you enroll a client, it hooks into PAM and NSS. PAM does when you log into your Linux machine on the console or in KDE, GNOME, or SSH, your password check. And NSS, the name service switch, provides user information, like 
give me username, give me like your group membership, give me uh, look, uh, your AutoFS mapping for NFS, and it does caching and lots of stuff more. So, and finally, we have the user interface that's all written in Python. The logo looks kind of funny. Oh no, not here. Good, only on my screen. Uh, management and the installers. And a bunch more stuff, so OTP support, YubiKey support, um, some integration we have in um, an Android and Apple app to the OTP, like the Google one, but actually ours work with SHA-256 uh, OTP. So, I already uh, mentioned that you can integrate the whole stack LDAP, covers, DNS into other things because they're all centralized. So just give you a couple of ideas, an example of what you could do, what customers did, what we did to integrate that. You can store all your e email information in the LDAP server and use that, uh, use covers for single sign on. You can have radios for uh, WPA enterprise for your Wi-Fi so you can have roaming users, VPN um, for some users like uh, nowadays even for uh, Kubernetes, OpenShift, you sometimes need NFS, you can use Kabaraz, secure NFS, OpenStack use it internally, so a lot. Now, how do you actually install like this huge stack? It's a lot, so you develop server, Kabaraz server, DNS server, you need public key infrastructure, you need to assign key, you have a couple of additional services. Sounds complicated, well it's not. So. Quick demo setup. So I'm using Fedora 26, uh, 25. 26 came out like just two days ago. Didn't want to update my demo setup now. Um, but I'm using a new version of Free IPA that's actually not in Fedora, but uh, from a copper, so like a private repo we use for testing. Uh, Kerberos stream is called IPA example, and DNS is the same lowercase. All the machines have the same suffix, so it's like name, IPA example and they're all pointed to the master DNS server. I've enabled some as a Linux flags and firewall port opened, yeah. So, installation. Ah. These two commands in about five to seven minutes, depending on how fast your machine is, and you have a full running free IPA stack. Hmm. Easy enough? Oh, you don't even have to specify all these flags, you can even do it interactively. So if you don't give it any flags, then it just will ask you a couple of questions and have to type in two passwords and that's it. There you have your full running LAP server, camera server, and CA internally. Of course, you also want to enroll your client so you can use all the feature on your client machines or on your, on your servers. So if you enroll a client, you have a similar command, you install a client package, you run this command. You don't even have to specify where your server is. In fact, you shouldn't do that. If you don't give it uh, the server name, it will just use DNS, find the next server, enroll, and will automatically fall back to another server, the one server uh, just maybe has a power issue or doesn't work anymore. And that one even uh, makes sure you create home directories if you look in the first time, configure your Firefox if you use like an UI, and will also update DNS records if your machine changes the IP address. It looks like that, so I'm not running through that because it's going to be a bit short on time. Uh, for automatic enrollment, so if you don't want want to do it manually, you can also create the host before, use like an OTP, so one-time enrollment password, and add that one-time enrollment password and the host name to your uh, Kickstarter file or a bootstrap file or a golden image for the machine, and just enroll the machine with that, so you don't even have to type in your admin credentials when you enroll the machine. So, now we have a master, we have a client, we want to have a replica, so we want to replicate all the data to another machine, have a backup and a failover. Ah, that's easy too. Just announce that the machine is in replica, so you add it to the IPA server's host group and run IP replica install. You don't even have to uh, type in a password. And we'll set up a failover DNS server, LLAP server, Kerberos server and CA server. Now, the interesting time, hope it works. Demo time. 
So my demos are all prepared, so I don't install the full stack now because it would take too long. It's all scripted with Ansible. I will add the URL to GitHub repo of my Ansible playbook uh, shortly before I upload the slides, so you can do that at home too. And I'm going to show you, uh, okay, interesting, uh, how you can run an Apache uh, service, so a, a website on Apache without actually doing any kind of Kerberos and um, LDAP in your application, but just use Apache to do the heavy lifting for you. So these are mod of GZ API, mod SSL for SSL encryption, um, also and set for uh, authentication, uh, for authorization, and two other roles um, I will explain in a minute. The setup has a couple of users and groups. So I have three users, an admin user, default admin user, myself, and user Bob, uh, with three different groups. So we have an admin group, we have a web admin group who administer the application and the server, and more than a user. Uh, two machines, uh, so I don't have a replica here right now because it's taking too much power and too much CPU and memory. Um, I have two host groups, so the servers group and the web servers group. Uh, a couple of HBAC rules. These are host based access controls where you can control which user is allowed to a service on which host with a special user for the web application. I have a sudo role to allow the web admin to actually log into the machine. And I also have a role based access control that's for roles inside the IPA server called service admin. So you can delegate. Um, free IPA permissions to a user uh, or to a group of users. For example, you can give a group of users uh, permission to manage your user account but not manage machine accounts or manage services or manage enrollment of hosts. Okay, so just change the display settings. Now you should see, yeah, perfect. Okay, call that. Notes. Yeah. Hmm. Perfect. My evil creature doesn't want to show me the notes. Ah, no, it works. So, do the command the right order. So, first of all, uh, Let's show you the, the interface. So now I'm using KEnet to get my ticket granting tickets. So you see here, the big enough for you? Can you see that? Okay, perfect. Thumbs up from the back row. So the KRB TGT, that's my ticket granted ticket for my domain. I'm now log in as an admin. admin. Yep. And so that the interface, let's refresh because I'm not going to use my TGT to actually access the web page, so that's the main interface of free IPA web interface. If you look again, you see we have a the ticket for the HTTP server for the master. Okay, now let's log in another user to show you how we're going to log in. So I'm a web admin, so I have to deploy my application. No, it's one. So just to show you how BSH login works. Now see, you see here, it found my DNS, uh, the fingerprint of the server DNS, I have not, never logged in. Uh, my machine is not uh, enrolled in the domain I'm working on here, so if it would be enrolled on the, on the actual free IPA domain, I would not even see that, it would just, uh, automatically approve the keys. So now I'm in. Okay, we also need to sudo, so, but we already have a sudo rules for my user, prepared that already, so I can log in. But first, see, I delegated uh, also my ticket to the other machine, and now I'm using the command line tools to create the demo service. Uh, demo, AIPA example. Well, so we have now a service and it's managed by the machine. So that's the machine. Oh, yeah. 
So now to deploy the application, I need pseudo writes. And what we need for the application, oh, we wanna have SSL. So we need to fetch SSL. But I don't have, eh, I don't have any credentials here, which is actually a good thing because I don't wanna get the certs and the key tab for the service as my own user. I'd rather want to, the machine to manage them. So I'm gonna log in as machine. So now I'm locked in uh, the actual machine and run two commands. I've prepared to not make any typos. So now I'm using a tool called IPA get cert and certmonger to get my certificates for the machine. You see here I store my key, I store my cert. I ask for um, subject alternative name DNS, IPA example. Uh, the cert is uh, maintained by the service and every time the cert is downloaded or renewed, I want to reload my HTTP server. This tool also tracks the cert, will do automatic renewal in case um, your cert runs out. Okay, that's the cert request. Well, worked fine. See a couple of infos from the cert. And that's how I open it all to see the cert. So, interesting part is, where is it? To do here on, yeah, yeah, here. So DNS name, there are a couple of other names that are supported by OpenSSL, that's the service information. Okay, now we have the cert. Now we're going to do the first demo step. Ah, <laughs> good thing I made that right. We also need a key tab, right. Because every Kerberos service needs a key tab. Get key tab. Well, okay, that's easy too. So IPA get key tab, store it in the file, and done. And now I can actually do my first demo step. So it prepared a couple of config files, reloads HTTP, and now let's show how it works. Okay, make it bigger. Well, I'm locked in as my own user. The alert screen. So and I have another, all right. Okay, but just having the user is a bit boring. We want to also have like uh, my complete name. We want to have my email address. Okay, next step. We're going to add a tool called mod uh, lookup identity and that talks directly to SSSD. So SSSD, uh, downloads uh, all information from LDAP for me, does the caching, and uses a tool called InfoPipe to add the information to my web request. So, and now, see, with the new tool, um, you actually see more information about me. That's, scroll down. So, I have a couple of config settings. Oh, we'll just get the information from my user. Okay, almost out of time, so we're going to speed up a bit. Um, next thing is, so we'll try user Bob. User Bob uh, is actually not in the web user group, so he shouldn't be able to access the application, but in fact, he can. So, we're missing something. We're missing a uh, check of the authorization that's done by the actual PAM model. So, let's do the next demo step. And now, user Bob is no longer allowed to log in. But, actually, we want user Bob to log in. So, increase the font size a bit. Go to user Bob. Add Bob to the next user group. So, right into the web users. Save. Load again. Okay. Ah, it works. So, it takes a couple of seconds to propagate the information. Now, user Bob is locked in. So, that the, that's how you do. So, you have a very simple PAM service. Uh, again, all the examples are uh, 
and the Ansible playbook, so you can download just the information. So it used for authentication account information at PAM SSS, SSSD, and the web service. So, uh, and finally, we also have a way to maintain certificates. So just to show you, we want to revoke a certificate. Just say, well, maybe key has been compromised. Oh, that's a fun message. So, key has been compromised. Now, since Apache also does a bit of caching, I have to show you that in a new window. It's going to take like two, three minutes until Firefox and Apache show up. And, but, in a new window, the direct check, and now you see, certificate has been revoked, but we can use um, CertMonger just to request a new cert. So we key did just resubmits a new request to CertMonger. It does the magic, reloads Apache, creates a new certificate and a new a new private key, and try again. And now we okay, we're not logged in, but again, cert works again. Okay. So Kerberos is nice, but web applications or mobile phone rather want to use SAML or OpenID Connect. Sure, no problem. We also have that covered. There's two external tools, so these days you probably rather want to use Keycloak, that's the new shiny thing. If you're a Fedora contributor or a GNOME uh, contributor, you probably know Ypsilon Project, it's a, also an OpenID uh, Connect and SAML provider that use the same features I just showed, uh, so SSD, uh, the lookup identity and uh, Kerberos thing to provide uh, sample assertions and open ID connect information. And if you're locked in directly with the Kerberos ticket, then you just get directly a sample assertion. So we can show you that. I have a demo site. So the Epsilon server, just log in. I'm directly logged in as user Bob and then go to a, a site, so they use it now mod of Melon um, to talk to um, uh, Epsilon IDP using SAML and you get the same information. Well, that's covered. So, and finally, these days, it's all about containers. So containers are still a bit of an issue because they behave differently and they're transient and that like persistent machines, but uh, we're going to work on that. So uh, I'm currently changing teams, we're building up a new team to try to integrate the whole stack I just showed into OpenShift, Kubernetes, and Project Atomic. So OpenShift origin, Project Atomic uh, from Red Hat, Kubernetes is a joint venture founded by Google for running containers and we're currently looking into that. A quick summary. So you can, with free IPA, uh, manage your users, group, machines, and service accounts centrally. You can centrally control access control and policies. You can do single sign with Kerberos, with third party extension, also SAML and OpenD Connect. And you have your own CA internally. Questions? We have like two minutes. One or two questions? Hi, thank you for this. I was wondering about the Hadoop ecosystem that uh, is heavily using Kerberos. Are you guys looking into it with uh, major Hadoop distributions like Cloudera or Hortonworks or something? D I didn't get the last two. Can you speak up a bit, please? Yeah, sorry. There's a bit of, ec I mean, a bit of an echo. <laughs> I, can, I can go closer. I was wondering, since the Hadoop distributions use Kerberos heavily and it's kind of a mess over there. Uh, do you know if you guys are working with major Hadoop distributions uh, such as Cloudera or Hortonworks to get free IPA in? So actually I don't know anything about Hadoop. I never tried to deploy Hadoop cluster and free IPA, but if they just use Kerberos, 
should work out of the box. So you can use the same tool set to do all the cover setup. But I would have asked a couple of coworkers to do an integration into that. Cool, thank you. Any more questions? Anyone? So, yeah, you have one there. Uh, by the way, I have a couple of stickers here. I have info material about free IPA, SSSD, and the commercial part, so IDM for MedHab. It's the same software, just with commercial support. All over here, if you want to have some more information, yeah. Uh, uh, which, is the, which is the name of uh, the APC mod, uh, module for authentication? For authentication, that was, just, okay, sorry. Hmm, it's a bit slow. Just, it's mod out and set, that one. So it can bo both do uh, authentication and authorization. Uh, in combination with the other module I didn't show, because we're running a bit of time, uh, we can also uh, do direct authentication by intercepting a post request and having one time login. But you actually see how the locking works. I'll watch the slides by Jan Pizzura uh, about the Django application, because you actually want to do only this login when you log in uh, the first time, not do all, get all the information for every request. So you, for the login route, you get all the information, use your Django, Plone, Flake, Flask, whatever, a persistent login system, and store the information on the first login in your database. And the next time, user logs in. Thank and you. I'm running out of time. If you want to catch me, you can find me by my, not red fedora, because my red fedora is just too hot in the summer, but what I want. And Grab a sticker or grab some information material if you like. Hey. Thank you so much.